I'm Elizabeth Newsom and welcome to my booktube channel. Today I'll be doing a video of my very late July wrap up. So let's get started. Alright, nonfiction is going to be the easiest category to start with because there are only two nonfiction books I read that month. So in July I had a reading competition with my brother. I might give you some of the results of that later. I really want to film that video with my brother. He's like one of the only family members that hasn't been in a video. But he's already gone back to Texas where he and I are going to attend college so I'll have to wait a few weeks. But anyway, because it was a reading competition and I wanted to read as much as possible, like just sheer volume, I read tons of fiction because I read fiction really fast since it's so addictive. So my favorite nonfiction book I read this month would be What Everybody Is Saying, An Ex-FBI Agent's Guide to Reading People and like Reading Body Language. So this is one of my all-time favorite nonfiction books, and I actively use a lot of tips mentioned in this book. Like one of the questions he asks is, what do you think is the most honest part of the body? Like is it, is it the torso, legs, gestures, face? The answer is actually your feet, because people don't pay a lot of attention on like controlling their feet and stuff. Usually we try to control our facial expressions. So people's feet point towards where they want to go. And a lot of times, oh, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but there's a jet, so sorry. But a lot of times people's feet point towards where they want to go. So I use this tip a lot, like I went to the zoo recently with a friend, and to tell whether or not she was done with an exhibit, I'd look at her feet. Because I've been to the zoo recently, I wasn't sure if she'd want to look at an exhibit longer or if she was bored of it already and was just staying because she thought I wanted to look longer and she was being polite. So I just looked at her feet. If both her feet were pointed towards what she was looking at and she was kind of leaning on the railing, then I stayed until she was ready to go. If she had one foot kind of pointed this way, one the other way towards the next exhibit, then we'd go ahead and move on. Or the other night, my parents had someone visiting them and it was kind of late, and it seemed like he didn't have any intention of leaving for a while, so I looked down at their feet to see if they were like really engaged in the conversation or if they were just being polite, and both of them had one foot pointed towards the guy and the other pointed away from him, so it seems like both of them were pretty much done with the conversation. But there are a lot of other really useful tips in there, that's just like one of them. And this is like the fifth time I've listened to this, uh, I listened to it as an audiobook. And it's just, it's phenomenal. Like, really, I don't think you can listen to it too many times. The second book would be Survive the Unthinkable. So as I'm getting ready to go to college, it's occurred to me that I kind of have a tendency to be really naive uh, and really positive. Like, I like to assume the best of people, which is great. Except in certain circumstances. So Survive the Unthinkable is a woman's total guide to self-defense. And I read this just because I want to be more aware of my surroundings since I'll be out of state and even though I'm going with my brother, I might not always have him around me so I need to make sure that I can take care of myself, at least to some degree. Alright, on to the fiction. My favorite fiction book I read this month was The Girl Who Could See. So at the writers conference I recently went to, the author actually gave me a free copy and I am so glad she did. I read the whole thing in one plane ride and it's like... It's so great. So great. <laughs> I don't want to say too much because I have a video just for this book coming up, but essentially the book is based on this writing prompt. They say every child had an imaginary friend. Mine never left. So essentially there's this girl and she sees this guy and these crazy things happening that are actually from an alternate dimension, but no one else can see them so she thinks she's going crazy. And also the person she could see from the alternate dimension is like the last person alive on his world because there's this huge dark creature thing that's like consumed every living thing. So he's trying to warn her that this creature is going to start breaking into her world unless she like starts believing him and taking action. So of course the guy is like a warrior and he's really cute. And time works differently in both dimensions, so even when she was like 8 or 12, he was kind of her guardian then, and he would like help her and protect her. It's just like, so sweet. Like, oh my goodness. And I was getting so emotional at parts on the plane, I was just trying so hard to keep it together. But this book was phenomenal. Like, 
Oh my goodness, it's so sweet. And if this author ever writes another romance again, I'm buying every single one. Like, it's just, it's beautiful. All right, book number two is Gemina. So Gemina is the second book in the Illuminae Files. And it was, it was really good, just excellent writing and literature. And I love all the details in here. And in here, one of the main characters is actually kind of an artist. So you get to see like some of her journal entries and stuff. See, that's the main, see, that's the main character. That's kind of a love interest. That's another love interest. That's her dad, her mom. But it's just a really cool book. I didn't get as emotional over this one as I did for the first one. But again, there's like a great, great relationship going on. Like a really, really intense plot. One thing that I wish more I saw in these is like, so the two main characters who are the love interest in these books usually start out where like, they kind of don't like each other, or at least one doesn't really like the other, usually it's the girl. And then over the course of the book they like fall in love, and then the book kind of ends soon after and I don't know, I, I just wish I got to see more of the relationship after it develops, but that's kind of the romantic reader in me. But again, no real complaints about this book, it was great. Just the other book, The Girl Who Could See, made me so emotional. The next series I have is The Girl Who Dared to Think. So I really like this. The concept is fascinating. It's got a good romance going on. So the concept is that there's kind of been this nuclear war around them and everything is radioactive wastelands and they live in this self-sustaining tower. Everyone in the tower has a different job and they all wear like a wristband that has a number from 1 to 10 on it. And this scale of 1 to 10 is supposed to be based on their ratio of negative to positive thoughts, but it's actually kind of based on how obedient they are to the tower. And by the tower, I mean like the artificial intelligence thing that controls the tower. So 10, they're really good. If they drop to a 3, they take medication. If they drop to a 2, they're put in solitary confinement. And at 1, they disappear, or actually they're executed. So, yeah. This series really had me going for a while, but then something happened in the second book. And so, they run across this other AI in the second book who's like an older version of the current AI who controls the tower. But he still has his like empathy intact and stuff, and he's the AI like he's supposed to be. So from the very start, I like really liked him, and I just found him endearing. And he has a lot of human characteristics and qualities because that's how his creator designed him. And then things get really crazy. So her boyfriend is attacked by this guy, and he ends up brain dead. So the AI inserts himself into the boyfriend's head to try and repair the brain damage and get this guy's personality back. Which, okay, that's, that's kind of weird, but I was going with that. It's like, okay, this creates a lot of kind of romantic tension because it looks like her boyfriend, but it's not her boyfriend. And then she starts falling in love with the AI, which it sounds weird, but I actually shipped them because he was essentially a human, like he was in a human body. He had the complexity of a human. The only thing was that he was really bad at jokes. But then the boyfriend starts coming back mentally and they're both like kind of sharing the same mind and body. Initially when I met him, he was kind of like sweet and cocky and confident. And then when he comes back, he still does things, but he also makes a lot more innuendos than he used to. And the AI is like fine with just like holding her and kissing her while he is thinking of other things. So I was kind of alienated from the character in that way just because he seemed kind of different from how he was previously. And then of course the guy, her boyfriend at one point tells her that he's okay occupying the same body and sharing her with this AI because that's kind of what love is. It's like being okay with that. Uh, I would disagree. And it just, it, it like really lost me at that point. So it's a seven book series. I dropped it at the sixth book just because I like, I, I, I couldn't do that. Like I'm not into polygamy or two people sharing the same body who are both okay with also sharing the same girl. Anyway, that's my personal preference. It was a great book overall, great characters and romance and world building. Just, just that, that part lost me. Number four is The Raveling by Tamara Lee because of course Tamara Lee is awesome as always. So as I talked about in the previous video, there's this knight who's searching for his son and there's this woman who has this like lip deformity 
And she takes in other children that people don't want who also have deformities because, you know, that's what she was. And one of the children she takes in is actually this knight's son, except then the son runs away. So together, she and the knight go looking for him. And of course, they fall in love. So this was a super sweet book, and just, I always enjoy Tamara's books. And I'll get to meet her in person for the first time in an upcoming writer's conference, so I'm so excited. Number five is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Ross. So this is kind of the first, this is one of the first really epic fantasies that I've read, and I really enjoyed it. Essentially, it's kind of like this innkeeper who's telling his story to a scribe about how he came to be this legendary hero, and now he's kind of disguised himself and settled down in this inn. So essentially, it's sort of fictional and biographical. Like, it starts when he's a kid and how he learned some, like, alchemy and magic and stuff. So I really enjoyed this series, and then I got to book two, and I ended up dropping the book because it got to a part where he found this magical fey woman, and at first he realized that she was kind of using mind control to keep him, like, attracted to her and stuff so then he fought it but then they kind of came to terms and came to an agreement so then he was okay like having sex with her while she like taught him stuff and that was it was kind of erotic but then also there's this other girl that he like really really likes and not once does he think about her during this time period where he's with this woman and so for me that's not okay like having sex with someone else and you know like, I was really shipping him hard with the other girl, so I was done after that point. So yeah, I ended up dropping a few series this month, which is really sad. I hate dropping books. Then there's The Electrical Menagerie. This is the first steampunk type of book I read. Essentially, it's the greatest showman with a steampunk twist. And I'm really glad this book was the one to break me into the genre, because I just, I really liked it. Not as much as, like, some other more fantastical and romantic books, but it was really good. So there are these two partners. One is named Carth. I believe, and the other is like A.Q. Huxley. And so Carthage is like the main ringmaster person. He believes in like magic and stuff. He just loves like interacting with other people and seeing their expressions of awe when he does some sort of magic trick. A.Q. Huxley is a bit more practical and he's like concerned about whether they'll go broke and finances, but they both ended up being really likable. It switches from both of their perspectives, and I found that whichever character was the POV character, like, I really related to, and I just really liked. And I ended up just adoring both of the characters, and I think that's probably the best part of the book is the characters. I mean, the journey is great, and it's really cool in all the world building and stuff, and having this, like, mash of historical with futuristic, but the characters absolutely had to be my favorite part. And then finally, there is the Breakwater series. So I read this one and Cross Current. They were both pretty good. In the first one, this girl has to report her fiancé for murder because he murders this nymph creature. And so, of course, they break up their engagement, and it turns out her fiancé is really violent. So there's a lot of politics and intrigue in this book, and of course mermaids, and it was just so cool to see that kind of world building, like how they integrate sea terms into like their language and like kind of what they eat and the things they do but with that i didn't really relate to the main character as much like she would just do some kind of not so smart things which is really funny because uh, my characters have a huge problem with that but like at one point the king advises that for the sake of peace she should go and re-establish an engagement with her violent ex-fiance so she decides to do that, even though pretty much everyone but the king tells her not to. Then her ex-fiancé tries to kill her. It was just like, I wonder why that happened. So in some ways, I really admire her, like, for how selfless she is and how she tries to help other people. But at the same time, I wish she'd do things that make sense. But overall, it is a great series. I don't regret reading it at all, and I'm so looking forward to when the third book comes out. Well, there you guys have all the books I read in July. I'm sorry this is so late. I tried recording it before, and something happened where my external mic ran out of battery, so there's like static and white noise. And you couldn't actually hear me talking, you could just see me talking. So, of course, I had to re-record it, which is why it's so late. But thank you guys for taking the time to watch it. And if you like videos like these, then please subscribe, because I post two bookish videos a week. And also, I'd love to hear your thoughts. In the comments, just tell me what kind of things you read this month. Let me know down below, and I'll see you next time.